Welcome to another Build Day Live video here at Cohesity. I'm Alistair Cook, and I'm joined by Bharath Nagarath. Bharath, what's your role with uh, Cohesity? Uh, I'm a senior systems engineer at Cohesity. I deal with a lot of customers uh, in the East Bay area here. Excellent. Well, we naturally enough have some hardware here in this large brown box in front of us, and the first thing we should do is, is open it up and take a look at what's inside. Yep. So, cut the tape. Always an exciting moment to cut the tape. And what have we got? More Cohesity branding. Yep, um, we got rails, we got our bezel, and the box usually contains uh, a quick start guide as well as uh, 10 GB cables uh, that we need to connect our box to. Cool, and these rails look like they're toolless quick connect rails? Yep, it's That'd toolless quick, quick connect rails. Put yep. Great. All right. Well, we should take those out and set them aside. All right. We won't be needing them for this particular video because we're not going to install into a rack. So we'll, uh, let's put those both on the side. Right. And then box. Just power, power supplies, but normally when, when these are, yep. are retail delivered, there would be the um, SFP plus. Yeah, um, we usually have a conversation with the customer prior to being there. Do they want SFP plus or what kind of a 10 GB cabling they want? And based on that, it gets shipped within the box. Great. And of course, a nice pretty be bezel there. And then the protective foam. Lovely. Thanks, Alistair. And what have we got in here? Oh, this is some more extra padding, some I more, guess. more plastic and coating. All right, and so normally this is a, a lift out. Yeah, it's yeah. A fairly heavy unit, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a fairly heavy unit. Uh, and typically uh, at the data center, I have uh, one other person helping me. Right. And there are ways that you can lighten the load as well by just removing the nodes at the back or the, the storage disks at the front. We actually have a legend that uh, contains the entire mapping of the system. So in case you do remove any of these components, you can, you can uh, put it back without any problem. Okay. Well, I think we can do a two-person lift to get this, mm -hmm. this out yep. and, uh, and then the box out from underneath. All right. Nice hand holds in the plastic. <laughs> Trace, can you just whip the box out for us? Just, yeah. Fabulous, thank you. Good. Fingers clear. Here can uh, we'll clear off the plastic bag. So this is a fairly conventional uh, four servers in two U enclosure. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I'm presuming we've got a release and slide out. So that's the actual node compute um, memory in there. Yep. IO boards in the back. Nice. So this is the PCIe flash and then your uh, network connectivity. Correct. 10 yes. gig network connectivity in there. Yep. Nice. And I think this is the version where you have uh, two 10 gig NICs at the back. Two 10 gig SFP yeah. plus. All our uh, newer models actually have four as well. Right. Yeah. So and then a couple of one gig ports for mm -hmm. management network. Yeah. So we yeah we typically use that to uh, discover the cluster when we actually rack it up on site. We don't use as much the one gig ports apart from the IPMI for management. IPMI. Yeah. Nice. Yep. These back in. Uh, dual power supplies again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, it's a, it's a beauty about hyperconvert systems these days. It's just plug and play. Very conventional. Yeah. And uh, if you actually look at the front over here. Let's, uh, if you want to help me turn it around to the camera a little. And then what have we got? We have, we have the PCIe for acceleration in each node, mm -hmm. and then we've got hard drives in the front for each node. Correct. 
Yes. The and again, that's a configurable option. How many and how large? Uh, typically, we kind of uh, pre-calculate that based on the model that you're choosing, but it, it mostly remains com constant. Uh, it, uh, in terms of uh, the, the configuration of the number of disks, it remains the same on the two you node. We have, I think, uh, four disks per uh, node over here in the front. And if you actually go in front over there, there's a little tab over here that you can pull. This typically, on one side, it basically gives you the configuration of all the disks that you have and what the arrangement is, because each node has its own mapping to the disks. And at the back here is actually the cluster SSN ID, which is the, which is the ID that we use when we are actually on site and when we actually run this cluster configure script to basically dis discover all these nodes. Right. So it's, it's not, the, the layout of the disks is not just straight each column corresponds to one of the nodes. Mm -hmm. There are actually three adjacent disks that aren't a column. Correct. And that, that gets confusing if you're not expecting it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why I, I mentioned in the beginning is if we, because the, the, most of the weight is around these disks and the nodes over there. If we actually end up replacing it or removing the nodes for some reason, we just have to make sure that the mapping kind of goes based on right. this legend pro provided here. And it's all color coded labels on, on the dr drives. Yeah. But uh, this would be a, um, you'd, you'd want to depopulate the whole thing if you're putting it above sort of halfway up a rack. Yeah, in scenarios where you don't have a, uh, a oh, rack mount machine and lift, things yeah. like that, uh, I typically loosen this as much as I can uh, because it gets kind of tricky if it's above your shoulder height yes. and it is quite heavy. Excellent. And really the, the hardware is fairly conventional in terms of being a hybrid, hyper-converged mm -hmm. platform and that, that plays towards the story that this is actually a software-defined story rather than being specifically about this appliance because the appliance could be from multiple vendors since you have partners hardware on which the, the software runs. Yeah, that is our play, right? Uh, the, uh, the idea is simplicity uh, of our software will basically plug into uh, any of the vendors around the Cisco, HP um, um, areas. So um, it's just a, f it's a function of having the right capacity of disks, having the right RAM and CPU, and then um, the software just sits on top. Yeah. And this story kind of extends to even cloud as well, right? Right, right. And we'll be playing with more uh, of the implementation. We will be using this appliance. And uh, when we get back into the live video, you'll see us deploy this appliance out as a cluster. And then later on, we'll be having a, a good look at the cloud appliance as well. Well, thanks, Baraf. Thank you for joining us. Uh, do stay tuned for more of the videos from the Build Day Live event here at Cohesity. Thank you.